to like saw you tonight. Okay, um, with that, I'd like to introduce Kim Niemer, who's going to be our presenter. Great, well, thank you. This is a great crowd on short notice. And um, tomorrow night, I'm actually doing a meeting on South City Park, so if y'all want to show up in Reading tomorrow, <laughs> different PowerPoint. But, um, and so I think that's important. I wanted to say that only because um, city government and county government are different. And in a city environment where we have a parks and recreation department, and I'm the community services director, so that's parks, recreation, libraries, public art, schools, museums, uh, soccer parks, convention centers, kind of everything uh, all there, that um, you know, my job is really to help groups like yours that want to do things in their community figure out the red tape and figure out how to make it happen. And we have a really long history and a successful history in Reading of citizens coming together with a passion, a dream, an interest, uh, the sweat and labor and, and treasure to make it happen. And so, um, but what is um, apparent to me is that it's very hard to do that when you don't have somebody on the inside. And so I just wanted to do a shout out to all of you FOIL members who've been at this for a very long time that uh, it is difficult, the process is difficult. Um, and so also I wanted to acknowledge Mary because we were sitting at a opening to a housing project just about a year ago, I think, and I said, you know, if we're going to get Bernie to happen, I'm going to need to spend more time on it. How would you feel about that? And she said, I think this is the time. So I want to give her credit for that because that gave me the green light to, you know, kind of really roll up my sleeves and start digging into what, what our hurdles were. And so tonight what I want to do is Whenever you have a project that's gone on for years and years and years and we've had turnover in the board and, other, and community members, you know, have come and gone, uh, sometimes the folklore becomes bigger than the facts. And so I thought that it's important as we kind of start this journey and hopefully, you know, I, as I say, we're like, you know, we're, we're like in the, you know, close to the end zone here, right? We're in the 10 yards where we've got really the work that we needed to do mostly done. And now we have to like carry the ball over the end zone. So I'm a recreation director. I use lots of sports analogies. So, um, but that's how close we are. And so that's why it's important that we meet tonight and we get everybody understanding what the proposal is, so that people can make up their own minds and figure out how they want to engage in that or not. Um, so with that, let me just go through this, and then um, we can see. If you have a question, why don't you raise your hand? It might be helpful to hit it at the same time. If we get too many questions, we might wait till the end. So let's let's start with that. So here's a picture of our little building, and uh, for a long time we've known that it's too small, hard to find, and outdated. So this is a timeline. I actually got this from FOIL and put a few more things into it. So I think, as Pat mentioned, that um, Bernie became the first branch library location in the Shasta County system in 1949. Moved to the new, the building, current building in 1969. The little funny there is that um, I was born in 1970, I'll tell you that, and the Civic Auditorium was also constructed in 1970. Now people are talking about how old and awful these buildings are. I'm starting to take it personally. Um, in uh, 1989, that was the first time that we had some major budget hit issues hitting the county and the, uh, all the branches, the 14 branches, uh, were closed. A FOIL was formed in that era to uh, say that's not good enough for us. How, what can we do to represent our library operation? Uh, it was reopened in 1990, and only three <coughs> locations were reopened. So it was Anderson, Reading, and Bernie. So it was a big deal, and the only reason it happened, and Francie gave me a little uh, lesson on the way up here, was that uh, the county said, well, we, we'll open Reading and Anderson because the city governments are putting forward some money and that the group here with support from her got FOIL to raise the money so there was a like contribution coming from the Bernie community and that's the reason Bernie opened and others did not. So I think you all have a great uh, tradition already of uh, making it happen on your own. Um, and then over time, the FOIL contribution increased to over Ten, I think it was in over 11,000 by the time we finished, actually. In 2003, that was really sort of beginning of a landmark change in our Shasta Public Library system. So the state awarded Shasta County $12 million grant 
uh, to build the Reading Library, and that was based on funding. The voters of California voted in a bond measure that paid for new library construction. We submitted an application. Uh, I think, Peggy, there was like 10,000 letters of support or something that went in with that. Just a huge outcry from the community that we wanted to have a new modern library. Uh, that also led to, in 2004, we had another financial crisis. Uh, people getting upset that the libraries were kind of first on the chopping block. And so a group was formed uh, called the Governance Committee, Library Governance and Financing Task Force. And it was mostly citizens that were interested in libraries and other things. And the main thing that came out of that was that there was a, a, a movement to move the governance of the library system from the county to the city. So a lot of you are be like, well, why is the city of Reading here? Well, the city of Reading's here because in 2005, that recommendation came that the city, uh, there was just more confidence in the city at that time on um, services like that. And so the decision was made to move uh, the operations of the library system, including Bernie and Anderson, to the city of Reading. In 2006, uh, there was an agreement, a 40-year funding agreement between City of Anderson, City of Reading, and Shasta County for ongoing financial support. So that was genius to the people that decided to do that because it also has a million dollar penalty for anybody who wants out. So there is very strong um, motivation to stay in at the prescribed um, contribution rates. And really, in 2007, 2008, when we had more financial um, recession and interest, the libraries really survived better than anyone else through that effort. And so that was all really due to the agreement being in place. Um, in 2007, uh, the city took on more active management. We finished the construction of the Reading Library. The city of Reading took over operations, and then we contracted with LSNS, which is a private company that does the day-to-day -day staffing of the library systems. That's been a very good partnership, and it was a cost-effective partnership. So, and I will tell you even more today that that was wise because as some of you may follow that the CalPERS rates are getting pretty high and so with this uh, private contractor uh, we don't have the issues of a pension uh, system they have a 401k system and um, it allows us to also make adjustments to contracts as we need to do that and we've been blessed with great library directors and uh, staff most of all of our staff um, came over from the county system to LSNS um, so, 2007, we opened the new library. Um, the very next year, the Hatchet Ridge Win LLC agreement is signed with Shasta County. So, that's an important milestone in this conversation. Uh, and then, in FOIL in 2009 makes the expansion and relocation of the Bernie Library a top priority. I would also say that then funneled into the Shasta Public Library Strategic Plan, which has the Bernie expansion <coughs> as a top priority. Uh, in 2012, Shasta County agrees to spend $40,000 on a feasibility study, so that was called the Godfrey Report. Uh, that looked at the size of the community, the collection, kind of talked about how much square footage we should have, how big the, how many books we should have, things like that. Um, that was completed in 2013. Uh, in 2014, it was uh, presented to the board. And at that time, the board, with a lot of uh, energy and uh, persistence on this group, by this group, uh, approved a $400,000 grant to FOIL for the purposes of a new library or library expansion. Oops. With the condition that it would be the last money in. And so since that time, we've been working to get the first money in so that they could be the last money in. And so the county also did a, a, a project in 2016. Well, some of you have been around, you know that we did do an appraisal on the Lions Pharmacy Building. We've been kind of looking at different opportunities. 
Uh, it's been a priority to be on Main Street and have that visibility and that accessibility. As many of you know, uh, Main Street is, uh, has an issue with a lot of floodplain and flood zone areas and it makes it difficult to find a building that is uh, suitable for public ownership. Uh, in 2016, the county did a full-on appraised uh, assessment of the Roper building and uh, came up with a fairly expensive transi transition um, to that. And in 2000, so then about, about 2017 was when Mary and I first talked and I started uh, delving into this. And so, um, like I said, my, my uh, MO is a lot more collaborative and community-based and volunteer-based and that's just how we get things done at Reading Recreation. And so I took that approach to this problem on like, Surely there has to be a better way than to pay, you know, the County Public Works Department um, travel time, you know, all this effort, um, pu public works bidding time, all this stuff to, to do a building, which is actually a very attractive, well-maintained building. Didn't seem like it should cost that much to get it ready um, to occupy. So we went through that plan and we had it appraised again because there was some, the county can't buy a building without a formal appraisal. And that was also sort of like one of the things we just had to nail down was how much was the building going to cost. And so we did that uh, last year. And so there's a little bit of a wrinkle in that that I'm going to share with you in a minute. Um, but we also started looking at the 2016 report and said, you know, this laundry list of things that they said needed to get done, how could we get that done more affordably? And so um, I don't know a lot about that stuff. So I have this really sharp young man named Adam Whelan that works for me. and he's construction guru and so he came up here he met with Kevin McKay um, and they walked through the building and I was hot I did bring a list because I know we have some detail oriented people here but you know most of the list is move the soap dispenser an inch move the paper towel dispenser two inches move the um, wrap up the pipes underneath the sink and you know um, not super complex stuff, um, but stuff that needs to get done so that the county doesn't have any exposure about it being a public building. So what we've done is we've um, sorted out who's best suited to do which tasks and how can we get as much off the county as possible because they're our sort of most expensive uh, resource. On the appraisal, so the appraisal was done and um, it came in lower than what the building had been listed at and so um, we've had some conversations. So right now there is a bit of a dispute on the value and it's an interesting one in that um, the appraisal came in at $285,000 and uh, Mr. Roper was uh, disappointed with that to say the least. and. Um, <coughs> because he had been paying property taxes at a much higher rate mm -hmm. on the building. And so I encouraged him to go to the county assessor and bring the appraisal with him. And um, he did that, and now the appraiser, the assessor is still saying that the building is worth no less than 300000 So we're going to have to figure that gap, but $15,000 in the scheme of all the things we're dealing with is completely manageable. So. But I think it is important that we be fair to him and that that, um, that get worked out. But we'll get there. <clears throat> so what this, I call it my action plan because it's kind of the next steps that we have to do. is So we presented this to Shasta County, to the County Administrative Officer, Larry Lees, and to the Public Works Director, his name is Pat Minturn. Um, Pat's really the lead on the building side of things. So. Um, and I'll tell you, the action plan is who's doing which pieces. So they are reviewing that right now, um, fully acknowledging that we are taking a lot of that off of their plate and that they're going to have to have some trust and confidence that we're going to get it done properly. Um, then we need to bring it to the Board of Supervisors for consideration. So the grant agreement is really an agreement for future action. Um, it didn't say that we're going to write a check. So basically we need them to agree that we've done all the things that they asked us to do ahead of time and that the money that was set aside uh, is ready. And so that would take council action. I know we're trying to get that done in February. Um, there's some rotary district grant money that's been extended quite a few times and some other funding sources that 
if we don't have a project in the very near future, that money is going to get pulled back. So we want to be timely about that. Um, in that uh, consideration for the Board of Supervisors, we would be asking them to purchase the property. And so that would be the action. And then on there, there, they only have one thing that they need to do to help get the building ready, and that is to install a visual fire alarm. So in all buildings, the public buildings now for code, instead of beyond just having an audible fire alarm, you have to have a flashing light so that people um, who are hard of hearing could see that there's, they're kind of expensive. So um, that would have to go in and that would just go through their normal construction bidding process. For FOIL, so FOIL, I will tell you, is taking on a lot of work here. So you all need to kind of understand what that looks like. Um, you know, first and foremost is the, the Board of Supervisors. So, um, you know, you have the benefit of Mary being familiar with your community, but the other four, not so much. And we certainly have, we have one brand new one. So um, there's going to be some effort leading up to that meeting to uh, educate them about your community and your interests. Um, we have a few more pledges and fundraising to nail down to make sure that we have the cash on hand that uh, is going to be necessary to do our part of the project. And then this is the part that is um, where there's a little bit of risk. Um, what we've talked about with the county is that um, that there's a number of these items that I told you that Kevin's reviewed that are I call them tic-tac-y. I don't have to do them, so maybe they're more complicated than I think. But simply moving fixtures around, and uh, there's a little bit more than that, but not not too much. Um, in order to do that um, in an environment that we could do it with volunteers and outside of county supervision, it would be best if we did it prior to the close of escrow. And so there's a little bit of risk on that, that if the escrow fell apart, that that would be money that would have been spent. I think materials, I was asking Adam, he thought, not including the doors, but probably no more than 3000 3, on materials. Does that sound maybe a little more? That may cover the cost of the drinking fountain. Right now we're pulling the drinking fountain out, so I have, a, I have an alternative <coughs> funding source for a future drinking fountain, but okay. the, most of this, the, the little odds and ends, yes. so I'd say maybe up to five, we'll, we'll cat it, okay? So, um, so that would be a risk. Um, I talked to Keith Roper this morning and shared with him that we were going to be up here and he did confirm again for me that he would sell the building at 300000 and that he would be willing to work with FOIL on some improvements prior to the close of escrow. So um, I've actually never met Keith in person, but I have talked to him several times and he's a very good man and um, I've just been impressed with him sticking with us through this long and winding journey. So. Um, and then FOIL would fund the parking lot improvements. So the parking space, it always cracks me up that this was approved for a physical therapy office at one time, but has all these ADA issues that now get, need to get fixed for a, a library. Um, but the parking lot on the front, the ramp, uh, has a slight grade issue that needs to be done and a rail that needs to be added. And on the back, there's a ramp that also the grade is not proper. And so. That is kind of complicated work, and the people that I trust best to do that in a cost-effective sort of way is my building maintenance team. And so we we were proposing that we would have foil, pay them time and materials to come up here and do that at cost. And so that way we know, again, we want to make sure that the county has assurances that everything's going to be done right. And so if they're not going to contract it out, we hope that they would trust the city staff to do it properly. That's still under review. Um, but that cost of that work, and it would just be the cost, um, would come from the FOIL contribution after escrow closes. So this is not before. It's not part of that. That small risk would be after. But prior, obviously, to move it. And then this is kind of a big one. Um, it, you have to move everything. <laughs> So one of the big line items in that 2016 report was decommissioning, commissioning, and so they were going to hire a moving company and um, a bunch of different things, and so um, there is actually not that much in the library, and so we feel like we get the high school out here, somebody will help us get it, get it moved over. So, and probably we probably need to go through some of it and see what needs to actually move over. Um, and in the new location, we have um, we have some excess bookshelves. 
uh, at the Reading Library. So I think we can make it look nice even if we're repurposing a lot of the same stuff. So that would be the FOIL contribution. And then for us would be to work with Shasta County on making sure that everybody's signed off on this approach to getting the project done. Uh, preparing for the Board of Supervisors review also. After the sale, completing the parking lot improvements in coordination with FOIL, and then partnering with FOIL on the relocation and setup. So Anna Tracy, who you met, she is our library director, so she's the one with the expertise on how, uh, what sections would go where, and we've learned a lot about library design after the Reading Library, and actually we've We've actually retooled, we've rearranged the Reading Library a couple different times now to improve visual distances and uh, keeping an eye on different corners and sections that we want. And so we've learned a lot there. So uh, Anna and her staff would be directly involved with that move over and setting that up. And so I would tell you that both Anna and I are super committed to doing our part to work with you to make all this happen and um, pretty excited about it. So this is just a little, um, this is a highly simplified budget, but it gives you a sense of where we are. So you'll remember that the county had $400,000 set aside, so I gave a little wiggle room because inevitably they'll remember things I did not remember. So um, the, so this has this still at a 285 purchase price, so we need to work that out, but they, they have to do some, there's, we gotta help pay some of the fees and commissions and things like that. Um, tenant improvements, so that was a line item in that report that was specific to computer issues, and so we want them to come up here and do that. ADA and safety, so that 45000 is the visual fire alarm system, so we have them doing that project. You can see, importantly, zero for commissioning, so we are going to be on our own to uh, transition from the old to the new. And engineering inspection admin, so that's staff time for them to um, handle the sale uh, and also the fire alarm project. <coughs> and then foil there at the bottom, oh, people in the back can see that. Um, the interior checklist, including ADA, so there are some other things that we would like to do in the building. Um, so that includes all that, about 30,000. And those, I think, for the, other than the maybe 15,000 that's some doors and some hardware that needs there's some that number is a little squishy so if we didn't have all that money we could fund some of it later um, the parking lot is not squishy so we are going to have to have that fixed before the county will allow occupancy of the new building I put miscellaneous furnishings in because anytime you move into something new you always realize that you need things that you didn't have or that you really don't want to bring that dingy something or another in your new house, and so you might want some new chairs or something like that. Um, and then a contingency of 20000 for a grand total of $100,000 for foil. So that's the, plan. That's, my that's the action plan, and that's how it gets funded, and that's who's doing it. And then the other piece, so I brought my friends here from Reading, so I want you to know that I attended um, a Shasta um, library foundation board meeting last week and updated them and so you know the people in Reading um, are very grateful for the support that FOIL and this community gave them during the Reading library campaign and I don't know if some of all of you know this but actually the, the foundation does actually support and fund some items uh, at the Birdie library as well so they're a foundation for the whole system um, and so they stand willing and ready to assist as needed uh, as we uh, carry if we this last this last run so um, but we have two um, veterans of this effort and so I asked Peggy Olay and Francie Sullivan to come with me today to give you some ideas about how that last part works I know many of you I see Evely here so I know she's also uh, a veteran of these efforts and probably many of you that I'm sorry I'm, I'm not aware of um, but this is really, this, I would say, you know, another, and now this is sort of our Hail Mary. You know, I think that if we don't do this project at this time on this building, um, we know we lose the rotary money because that money is going away quickly. There's not really any other building on Main Street that is um, suitable. And I think we just, uh, sort of the patience and, and focus of, at Shasta County on this 
project goes away too. So um, now is the time if this is going to happen. And so I think we have before you a plan that's very viable and feasible. Um, but really, it's, now is the people part. So we figured out the things. Now we got to figure out the people. And so Peggy and Francie, if you want to come up and chat a little bit about that part.